Hello, friends. Thanks for joining. I'm Sumati Tata from Quantum Sunrise, and I'm a galactic astrologer, intuitive astrologer. I'm going to speak with you a little bit about the full moon happening on the 19th of August in uh, just over a week from now. There are a number of different things happening. Everything that we've been experiencing over the, the last few years is feels like things are moving faster, and this is going to continue. With this coming week right now, or the week that we're in, leading up to the full moon, it might feel a little slow. Take the time. Take the rest. Um, things are going to get very busy, I think, in, um, in and around the full moon couple days before and who knows what comes after so i'll just get right into it um the moon is at on the 19th at 2 25 p.m toronto time so that's eastern time is at 27 degrees aquarius opposing the sun as it is with a full moon at 27 degrees in leo and um, the sun is conjunct an asteroid called Vesta. Vesta is the goddess of home, of the hearth, of devotion, focus. Um, we can look at the Greek myths for these stories, but um, what this is, what the, what the moon is highlighting on that day. And this opposition is going to bring to light our most joyful pursuits, giving us a chance to, well, not giving us a chance, but it's a good opportunity to take initiative, put some energy into creating what it is that we're truly passionate about. So really stopping to consider what we're truly passionate about. Now, this is a theme with the other um, aspects I'm going to discuss. But really determining what it is that we're passionate about, what it is we want to bring forward into the world, what we want to create. This can be in any aspect of life. Could be something practical, could be something spiritual, could be self-work, um, whatever that is. Really being um, considerate and focused about what it is our intentions are. Maybe just getting clear on that. And so the moon is in Aquarius. This is an expansive sign, um, one that is really taking consideration of uh, the broader scope, how, this, how what it is that we do might affect the collective or those around us, you know, something broader than ourselves. The sun and Vesta in Leo are kind of loud and proud about it um really bringing up this um maybe a sense of impulsivity but just acting out bringing out our passions playfulness um the perfect intention i think for for this moon will be to rekindle an internal fire what are the deepest passions that we have that we would like to really put some further effort in so that we can see these come to fruition? Another, another aspect that is happening with this moon is Venus conjunct the asteroid Astrea, and this is in Virgo, and these two are opposite Saturn in Pisces. Now, uh, Venus will have been in exact opposition to Saturn Prior to this, she's moved to 18 degrees of Virgo and Astrea. The asteroid is at 17 degrees of Leo, making an exact opposition to Saturn in Pisces. So Astrea is um, Astrea is a starry goddess. Um, she brings in a sense of fairness, healing potential, also maybe perfectionism, and 
uh, fear of our vulnerabilities. There are two different sides to this energy and um, it really can kind of go either way. It's very much about how we work with the energy. Sensitivity to these things will, will have come up for sure. Venus in Virgo is not in the most comfortable position. There's likely to be a feeling of maybe hurt, maybe being taken aback. Something won't quite sit comfortably. This will be another, in opposition to Saturn, this is really following and, and reinforcing this idea that there's a pause, a slowdown, allowing ourselves quiet time, really cultivating some compassion. So if there's something that hits us, doesn't really land well, doesn't land comfortably, don't like it, don't want that whole energy coming our way. And yet there it is. So sit with it. Avoid any um, maybe triggered desire to just react. Um, a vulnerability, accepting vulnerability is really, this can be a superpower, right? If we truly act when we feel most vulnerable, this can be a, a, from moving from a place of deep courage. So self-compassion and gentleness are some good keywords to keep in mind here because it may feel whatever it is that, that we encounter might hit a really tender spot. Mercury is in retrograde during all of this, of course. And so it will be important not to get too caught up in the mind, right? If we feel the emotions land and we don't like it, we want to try and find a way, you know, what is it we can do to shift this situation? Don't get too caught up in the mind. Don't let the ideas just start to lead you down a whole path because this might very well end up in this place of, fearing our vulnerabilities, right? We might start to catastrophize in the mind. And the mind is not what's going to guide us through in a heart-centered way. The heart will guide us this way. Really sitting in this calm, calm place in our center, finding that. Maybe it feels like we don't know where that is anymore. Finding our way back to that, allowing some quiet, now, something else, um, as I mentioned, there's a lot happening. So there are three T-squares happening at the time of this full moon. This is a lot of choices. This is a lot of potentially push-pull energy or, um, well, it's a T-square. The T-square is actually not a cross T, but Two, two pieces together. So we hit a crossroads. We're gonna, which way are we gonna go? What choice will we make? There's something that's acting, some energy, some event, acting as you know a sort of fulcrum in this square. Now, uh, of the three of them, I'm gonna speak first about the sun. The sun is conjunct the asteroid Vesta, as I mentioned. These are both in Leo, they're at 27 degrees. They're squaring Uranus in Taurus. And also squaring Uranus in Taurus is the moon. And so the moon in Aquarius Again, both of these squaring Uranus are going to bring uncertainty. Uranus is bringing the uncertainty. And so this T-square is bringing uncertainty, disruptions to our routines. This is Uranus and Taurus energy. Um, and we've already experienced some Uranian events, as you will surely have noticed. Actions, events, energies in the world, all around the world, are very um, 
changeable, very eruptive, shocking, unexpected. So, the moon and the sun squaring Uranus, the sun being conjunct Vesta. Keep focused on our energies and intentions, the truth and depth of purpose. Um, these sudden surprises and shocks are going to trigger our emotions. This, this square, the opposition plays in with this square. So maintaining an awareness and focus on our internal balance, knowing that um, whatever it is that might come up, we can we can feel true to ourselves and and definitely experience things more smoothly if we maintain or cultivate an ability to truly be the change that it is we want to see in the world and i know this is an expression um it's a very famous quote from mahatma gandhi to be the change we want to see in the world and so just maybe keep this in mind that our triggers are likely to have their buttons pushed, right? It's going to be shocking. It might be large scale, like this might not be personal. This may be global in scale or just, you know, larger than, than something happening to us on a personal level. And so maintaining an awareness of this, um, keeping energies focused on a greater balance, cultivating more love, not allowing or an over-energized sense of justice or perfectionism to kick into action and, and kind of trigger a knee-jerk response. Allowing ourselves the compassion and the courage to choose our responses, moving from a heart-centered place. This is very simple, but may not be very easy. Um, that's the first of a T of three T squares. The second is a T square of Venus conjunct. It's a it's a four degree orb, so it's a little bit large. But Venus conjunct the Black Moon Lilith in Virgo, also Astraea. So the asteroid Astraea is at seventeen degrees. Venus is at eighteen. And Black Moon Lilith is at 21 degrees of Virgo. They are all squaring Mars and Jupiter, conjunct in Gemini. Mars is at 19 and Jupiter at 17 degrees Gemini. Mars and Jupiter also square Saturn. So Black Moon Lilith, Venus, and Astraea, these bring up Potentially, and, and in Virgo, there's there's a real fine point either that we're hitting or completely missing where we want to focus on this one point and it's just everywhere but, or the most tender, most um, sensitive point is going to be what gets, what gets activated. Um, could be both. There's a lot happening. Now, we might feel angry, we might feel upset, hurt, um, might be, you know, hard done by, or maybe taken aback by someone else's actions or by the way events are unfolding. Mars and Jupiter, you want to push forward and might really just get super activated by anger, by a reaction, by a desire to excuse me, rectify something that is just absolutely out of bounds. We're not going for that. It's not part of what we had in mind. And we might really kind of feel like we need to react. Saturn is putting the slow down here. Saturn in Pisces is going to bring some, some sort of turmoil here in so much as it's, it's going to feel potentially like it's adding or compounding the problem when in fact, when in fact, I believe we can, we can work with Saturn 
consider where there are boundaries or limitations that may actually be working in our favor. Like if we feel like there's a slowdown, maybe this is a slowdown that we need in order to allow ourselves the time to really move through with compassion, through our thoughts, whatever it is. Mercury retrograde is going to be bringing these things to it. Mars and Jupiter in Gemini. This is also very centered around our, our thoughts and our communication. So taking some heed from Saturn and saying, okay, I'm going to slow down. And again, this theme of bring this back internally, allow yourself the grace of time to consider how it is you might respond. Allow the emotions to process. There are very likely to be some very intense emotions that, that get stirred up, activated. Allow it to sit within and allow it to move through without feeling the need to move and act on those emotions right away. It might seem really clear. It might seem like, obviously, this has to be done. but Take a pause, allow it to sit with you, allow it to percolate, um, and maybe reconsider where it is you might have overlooked your own boundaries. Maybe you're overlooking your own boundaries when you act, if you act and feel like you know exactly what has to be done, this, this um, need to enforce justice in some way, just hold your, horse, hold your horses and Consider where plans you had previously in place might just need a change. Like this, this Venus energy is wanting to bring some gentleness to the circumstances, to the situation. Allow that. Allow Venus the time to, to come out of herself, to express herself. And this can be internal. This can also be potentially be the thing that needs to be done differently, right? Bringing more grace, more compassion to the action that we're going to go forward with. So self-directed plans might need changes. Um, this is, this is, um, this is very much uh, something that Jupiter is going to maybe struggle with Mars about. It's going to want to make things work for everyone. And ultimately, is that possible? I mean, maybe in the smaller scope of what it is that you're wanting to do, it may not be possible to sort of make everyone happy, and that's okay. Consider where the action comes from compassion first. And with Venus, allow that compassion that you're cultivating to be directed inwards first. We can't pour from an empty cup give ourselves the time and the opportunity to digest the experience, to heal the shock of whatever may be this unexpected news, energy, information, experience. That's the second T-square. The third, the third is um, Pholus, another asteroid, minor body, this is in Capricorn, making a T-square with the north and south nodes. Now, this kind of just reinforces, puts a cap on the whole thing, a cherry on top, if you will. Bolus um, is indicating a, like a confrontation with reality. So with Bolus, we work with the unexpected, something exciting, intensity, um, avoiding impetuous moves, considering choices in earnest, and with idealized idealism guiding maybe the destination, the ultimate result, but with compassion and realism, allowing those to permeate our consideration before we act and move forward and take action. Expect the unexpected. This is the consistent theme I'm seeing uh, 
and expect that you will be challenged. This collectively, we will be challenged. And when we speak about the collective, you know, there's, I, I feel there's a tendency to consider the collective as others, right? Everyone else. We are a part of the collective. Each one of us together make up the collective. And so I feel that maybe this is where compassion can take its first step towards this full moon in considering how it is that we are in the world, how it is that we would like the world to be, and how it is that we can be part of that change between the way the world is now and the way we'd like it to be. Being part, our home, our true home, the home of our soul, right? in with our body and our minds to a unified intention and to act from the heart with integrity, with patience, and with love. Okay, I hope this information has been helpful for you. If you're interested in receiving your own personal galactic astrology reading, I would be most happy to hear from you. Please visit my link in the bio and I will try to make another video again for you soon. Sending much love with gratitude for all of you watching. Thank you.